Hey, I just want to welcome you guys to um, this edition of Woodcarver's Corner. We're going to do probably a full headdress Indian mask, something like this. And these probably are not really true masks because if they were true, where I've hollowed out in the back, I probably would go through the eyes or something like that, which I have done before. But um, anyway, something like this is what I got in mind. My plans for this particular woodcarver's corner is I've made some sketches. I done these uh, last night while I was sitting around down there. This one's kind of light. I hope you guys can even see it. Uh, but it's almost that same thing with the Indian uh, full headdress. The reasoning with the full headdress thing, you guys, is there's a lot of flu-flu to it. In other words, I can add uh, stuff on this headdress, the feathers. Uh, now, the reason I didn't draw in the braids on the hair on this one, when we get down to braiding some hair i'm going to draw the braids on here and show you the zigzag pattern and then i'm actually going to show you step by step how to do the braids i've noticed looking at uh, stuff online there's not a lot of people doing bare-faced uh, you know chin and neck and everything there's a lot of spirit type faces and this that and the other so I thought, well, let's get into something where I can show you guys how to set up the chin, the neck, the Adam's apple, and all of that. Now, let me show you the wood that I got. This is butternut. You might notice I sketched out just a face in there for right now. But in order for me to do a point perspective of a full headdress Indian, I'm going to have to take a chainsaw. And at an angle, I will knock all of this back at an angle around there where I can do his face. And then everything else will fall away from the face area. So um, anyway, I'll go back to this one guy. I would like to do this particular guy again. But he, see, I only got four inches thick of wood there to work with. And this guy was out of, I'm going to say a good six, seven inches thick piece of wood. But the concept on the one we're going to do is almost the same. See how I've sawed this back at an angle. And then I started at the face and everything else works behind the face. But I'll saw some of this stuff out tomorrow with the chainsaw. And then I'll bring you guys up to date on where we're going to from there. Well, hey, guys. Um, been out there, got it kind of roughed in with the chainsaw. I was just sitting here cleaning off where the chainsaw throws oil off the chain all over everything here and trying to clean up some of this stuff a little bit. Um, Let's go back to talk about our pattern and kind of what we're doing. Here is what we're going to try to achieve on this. This piece, I've carved on this thing just long enough with the chisel to see that it's actually a harder piece of butternut than I thought it was going to be. It's not going to be the greatest carve in the world, I'm sure. But uh, hopefully we can suffer through it. Uh, I've got this already all sawed back. And you might notice it's got a whole bunch of bug holes in, in it here. Which, butternut, that's pretty common. Uh, because the bug, that wood, I told you, smells like peaches. And something about that, them, them bugs like to get into it. Um, all right, let's go to our pattern here. And hopefully this is drawn heavy enough you guys can see it. But I'm going to show you where I'm going to get started at. First of all, 
I got a little slap happy with the chainsaw and almost knocked the side of his nose off there a while ago. So I decided I better quit while I was ahead with some of that. But right here is where I'm going to start, you guys. I am going to take a V tool, figure out exactly where this line is going to come across up here. I kind of already established where his face area is going to go at. Uh, of course, that's all going to change as we draw. Now, I'm going to begin to start shaping his face right here. And I'm going to just square out his jawline a little bit, get his chin going, square out this side on the jaw, show these high cheekbones. I'm after the high cheekbones on each side. This may not be quite symmetrical here. I, I think I'm a little off on one side. And I'm just going to put some dots down through the center line here on my guy. And a lot of times when I'm first roughing in, you guys, we'll see how this wood goes. Uh, I may have to change to a smaller gouges or something than what I'm planning. But I've got a number five 35 millimeter gouge here, uh, about a an inch and a half wide and what I'm going to do is come in along here and set a line with this gouge like that right there. I'm going to turn this gouge half over and I'm going to capture this high cheekbone. I'm going to take the same gouge, turn it back half over and set this line and then I'm going to catch the bottom of the fishtail of the gouge and begin to trim that chin in and underneath there. I may even run that chin right over like this with this gouge upside down. Then I'm simply going to turn over and do the same thing here. An outside cut over the high cheekbone cut. And then I'm going to capture these jawline and stuff here. So that's basically my first, and I'm just cleaning up right now, you guys. So let's do just a little of that, and then we're going to go back to our drawing. Um, let's pull this. I was trying to find my glasses, but I guess I'm far enough away from nothing here. I would made a chainsaw cut down along here. Um, in this area so here's at his temple i'm going to pull that in i'm taking this gouge upside down over his cheek high cheekbone now i want you guys to notice that i am working at an outward outward angle away from the face when you're first starting to rough in on something don't go straight in with your cuts. Always work away from it. Here, I'll start pulling this temple in a little. Now, he's going to have these medallions along each side of the face here. So, I don't want to get so rambunctious that I hit it so hard that I knock off a big piece of our medallions. But I'm upside down with this number five over this high cheekbone. And then I'm under the cheek here. And cleaning up down into my chainsaw cut. There's still a bunch of darn oil all over the thing from that chainsaw slinging oil over it. Uh, let's clean up a little bit of this oil from the chainsaw on here. Get it out of here. Now over the chin, I'm going to go ahead and upside down with this number five. Do a little cleaning up. I'm going to clean up the chin here a little dab. And here. A little dab in there. 
Now, you guys that carve faces all the time, you know that everything flows from the nose. So here in just a little bit, as I clean up around here, uh, I'm going to draw some lines here in just a second and show you. But as I'm cleaning up around this facial area, I'm going to begin to clean up the nose first because, like I just said, everything flows from the nose, this whole carving, because everything's behind the nose. So um, I'm cleaning up. I'm tasting. I haven't carved on this piece of wood much with the mallet yet. I, everything I've been doing so far has been with the chainsaw. For liability purposes, let me just say that chainsaw carving is an inherently dangerous occupation. And if you're not practiced up with your chainsaw very much, um, be very, very careful. Now, you guys that know me know that I spent about five years of my early carving career doing nothing but chainsaw carving. I, I used to chainsaw them big cigar store Indians out down there at Branson, Missouri when I worked down there. I was always roughing everything out with a chainsaw back in the day. And no brag, but just fact, I'm, I'm pretty good with the chainsaw. All right, I'm, I've got this kind of cleaned off up through here. Let me run a gouge through about where I think his eyes are eventually going to go through this area. We'll clean up some of this hamburger stuff on here like this. I call it hamburger because it's all just chopped up like crazy in here. All right. Now, for right now, I'm not real concerned about too much else here right at this second. Let's start mapping in where we're going to go to. And this line I just drew along his forehead, I'm going to run a V-tool there. But it's nice to start knowing what's going to happen. So, I'd come over here and let's draw this these medallions. Now, in this drawing, it's on a flat paper, so it's a little harder to interpret what I'm doing. But now, on these medallions, if I'm going to leave, let's say, a strip of um, leather or beads work or something coming out of the middle of the medallion, you want to plan for that ahead of time. So, as I'm drawing this in here, this medallion, I'm also going to remind myself that I'm going to try to leave a couple of streamers coming out of the middle of the medallion eventually. And back behind there can either be ribbons type stuff, or it can be, uh, I used to do a lot of mink, mink tails type decoration with this particular part. Down in here, notice I've got this strand of hair drawn here on my drawing. Of course, I got a tie and a knot, and I, I'm going to plan on leaving some ends on the ties and, of course, the ends of the hair here. Well, that's why when I chainsawed this cut right here, down through here, I'm leaving this area for the, this is where his braid's going to go on this side. This side, I'm leaving an area over here, along here. This will clean up. This whole neck thing, Coming in, I'm actually going to cut a V-tool cut here for my collar. 
Now, unfortunately, as you guys can see, I ran into a knot right in his neck, his little rotten knot there. Uh, whenever you're carving out of a log form, you're just going to have to deal with what happens along the way. So I'll deal with that knot as I get there. Now, I want you guys to notice, too, I'm setting up my other medallion over on the other side here. Of course, it's just my rough drawing, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I do want them kind of straight across from each other, and I'm going to stretch back into the headdress a little to get a nice medallion, and I'm reminding myself of the streamers coming out of the middle of it. All right, let's go up to what I call my key feather, and this would be the key feather. It's the one that's on top of everything, this key feather. This one will be on the top, and everything going this way will come out from underneath of them, and everything going this way will come out from underneath everything. So a lot of times, I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to rough in with a big V tool here pretty soon, a key feather right here. And I have a row of fluff drawn. See where this row of fluff comes across here, and this is all fluffy looking stuff in here. That's where this area is going to be right in here. And that row of fluff comes on over here and on over here eventually. All right, there's my key feather. We're going to do a niche between the feathers up here. And we'll start to niche the top of these feathers out some. So as I bring this one. Now I'm drawing these feathers probably bigger than the pattern for sure. Um, I may only end up with a dozen feathers over the top of this whole headdress here, but I will begin to V-tool these in. And this is where you would, we're mapping in right now. We're trying to figure out Okay, we got figured out the area kind of where this face is going to go. But we need to start mapping in like this, where the braids are eventually going to land, where these medallions are going to go. Now you can see we're only working with about a six inch thick piece of butternut. So we're not going to have room. Let's, let's get this guy back up here just a second. Notice how... I had room to show the notches at the top on this guy, but as I came over the side, I'm just showing parts of the feather because this is a wall hanging, and as long as you're kind of saying what you need to from the front, you don't need to have the backs of the whole feathers and everything in there. So this is basically what we're after. You can see there's quite a depth. Now, the reason for these depth, you guys, and I'll start working this depth around his hair and stuff fairly uh, soon on the carving. I'll start working that because notice what that depth does. It's framing the picture. It's pulling this face right out at you and all. So that's the reasoning for me to start around this whole depth area and in the neck and collar and above this bear claw necklace. Those are all areas down in here where I'll start getting more and more and more depth in there. Next. All right. This guy, I'm going to lay this on out, finish drawing it, and I'm going to begin to... I got this, the largest V that I have here. And I'm going to begin to start laying in a few lines. For instance, this one on his forehead where the headdress meets his forehead. I'm going to start to lay that line in. Now, 
I've just carved on this thing with some gouges just long enough to tell you guys this piece of butternut is what I would call fairly hard butternut and it's the reddish you notice how it's got more of a red tint to it and usually that's true with butternut if it, the reddish color that it is usually the harder the butternut is um, this is going to be a hard carve I can already tell you that but I'm going to take this large V and start to run a line for my feathers. Now, a lot of people says, well, wouldn't you start on the face and work other places? No, when I'm doing something like this, I kind of like to know where everything's going to start fitting together. Uh, like I just told you, I'll start in here cleaning up along where the braids are going to go. I'm going to get some good depth here. I'm going to start laying in these ribbons that go along here. I'm going to start tracing in around this medallion with this big V tool. You can see a big chunk just pulled off there. I'm going to clean up some of this area here. But for just a while, you guys, not only am I cleaning off the chainsawed area here, but I'm going to draw my feathers and I'm going to go for my depth first around here, back into here, and at this neck. I'll be searching out this darn rotten thing here. Matter of fact, while we're talking about it, let's kind of get a little taste of what's happening right there. See if it's so rotten it's just going to crumble away on me. Because a lot of times if it's not really, really crumbly rotten, uh, you could soak that area where it's kind of soft in the middle. You could soak it with some super glue um, and kind of keep it from just falling out of there on you. If you guys have been following very much of me carving, you'll notice that I, I've ran into a lot of rotten spaces on a lot of stuff here lately. But then if you're using driftwood or if you're using like this, a log that's not been milled and cut and everything and selected out, uh, you're just going to have to deal with whatever happens along the way. Even I notice you guys, uh, a lot of you carvers are using that cottonwood bark. Well, you guys that are using that cottonwood bark, I'm sure you've ran into areas where you're carving along there and all of a sudden there's like a wormhole or some kind of rotten white area in there. I've, I've carved so much of that cottonwood bark over the years that, you know, it's the same way as what I'm talking about here. You just have to deal with whatever happens along the way. So, for a little bit, you guys, I'm going to clean up some on this face area, but I'm going for the depth along the hair on each side, and I'm going to lay out my feathers more around, and I'm going to start scoping in. Let's get our model back up here again. I'm going to start scoping in. Now, here I've used uh, the ribbons along the sides of the face and all. And um, I wanted to take out some areas. Notice how square the bottom of this one looks. I got the same situation on both of these. Look how square it looks here on the bottom. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to, since I don't have enough room to get a um, bear claw necklace down here, because I sawed this off. If you guys remember when I was doing the chainsawing, I got a little slap happy up here on the feathers and 
down here. I, I sawed this all off because this knot went all the way through down here. But what I'm going to do, you guys, is I am going to cut this whole area out of here, right here. And I am going to cut this off at an angle here, but leave, I'm going to have some minx tails hanging down here. But I'm going to cut this squareness off, more of a V-shape. I possibly am going to cut some of this bottom out of here to leave the hair hanging past on the silhouette of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here is I'm going to have a bunch of zigzaggies on these minx tail ends here. So just by me beginning to add some, I'm going to say character to the area with these zigzags of the feathers and stuff, it's really going to change our mask. So I'm taking this piece out, this piece out, this piece out of here, and then I'm going to zigzag the bottom of this and lose that square look about the bottom. Now, our other one, if you guys remember, this is was only four inches thick. Now, on both of these, I've already started to take some of this uh, wood out of here. I'm leaving this out here where I'll have a place to put my vise on the back. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut out this piece and this piece. I'm going to leave our braid hanging down past that silhouette. Um, same way over here. I'm going to cut this piece out of here. Well, that's the end of the hair. I'm going to cut it out over here. Just mainly to break up this square bottom. The same thing I just said up there. I've already started here a little bit with it, but I'm going to pull these niches out a little deeper. And uh, I'm wanting to carve the braids on these guys as I get them rounded up and ready. You can see I'm starting to get some depth on the braids here. And if some of you guys that watch uh, Woodcarver's Corner have never carved a braid, this is a really good way to do it. And so in my drawing, I'm going to start the hair being a little wider at the top. And then it's coming narrower at the bottom. And then it's tied, let's say a tie here of some sort with a knot. And then, of course, the end of the ties flowing off down here. And then the end of the hair doing something down here. So we're going to braid this. Now, you can start out at the bottom with a zig and a zag. Now, as I do these zigzags, Notice that I'm not going all the way to the outside of the hair. I'm going up through the middle, and I'm going to get longer with each segment as I go up. In other words, here I'm going to get a little longer. Keep it going uphill quickly. Don't get to zigzagging too flat across there. You need to come uphill quickly. And I'm getting a little longer each time. This apparently is a student that's interested in, in braiding. See? Because he's over here. And he's bugging me. All right. I'm going uphill quickly. I'm zigging and I'm sagging. You can start with either one, the zig or the zag. It doesn't matter. Joke, joke. Ha, ha. All right. Notice that I didn't go all the way to the outside of the hair. Now, I'm just simply off the end of each one of these zigzags, I'm just going to come up and around, up and around, up, up, up. And, of course, this one may end up in the last zag of the braid here. Now, 
On this side, same thing. Up and around. Up and around. Up and around. Now, the biggest mistake that I see students make when I'm teaching this in seminars is they'll get way too flat with this zigzag situation and all of a sudden they're not able to bring these braids around together because there is a rhyme and a reason to these braids. In other words, this point here is actually coming out and around here. See, same way here, this is coming out and around here. But I'm going to lay these in on this. Of course, I'm going to clean up some of this bottom and get the hair ready. Uh, I'll probably do that this evening in my um, out in my man cave. In my, I do a couple hours in the evening carving session. So I will get these braids, probably on the other one too, our other mask, ready. We're going to show you guys how to lay this braid in there. Normally, I wouldn't be using a black magic marker, but then on the other hand, we're a long ways out. So we drew this on the paper, and I'm going to draw it here. Two important things. Keep coming uphill quickly, and you're getting slightly bigger each time you're doing the zig and the zag up through and keep in mind that you're not going all the way to the edges of the hair area you're giving yourself some room on each side so we're gonna zigzag coming up and get that part drawn in there now, off from these ends of the zigzags, I'm going to come up and around. And, of course, there'll be one down here, even though it's coming out from under the tie. You might notice that I already have the tie kind of started in here. But everything has to kind of be brought along together. So... I'll tell you guys a quick story. I uh, might have said this before, but I ain't sure. But, you know, when I was at War Eagle years ago, the seminar, and we were carving late in the evenings, and Doc Cosby, an old guy, a lot of you guys might even remember him. Of course, he's passed away now, you know. And he used to come to the War Eagle seminar every year. Well, one night, I was sitting there struggling, trying to do a braid on some hair. And Doc says, I can show you how to do an easy braid on hair. So while we were just sitting there uh, visiting and carving and talking about stuff, he showed me his technique, and this is it. You just do the zigzag pattern up through there. Maybe I should get my glasses on here. And I'm going to take a V-tool. Anyway, Doc showed me this in probably 30 minutes, you know. And, of course, at the time, gosh, I was a young guy. I was probably 30 years old or something like that at the time, you know. I'd been carving for quite a while, but I just never attempted to do much braids. So this was invaluable little information that he showed me. Now, notice that I'm doing my V-tool coming up, and I'm bringing them up and around the best I can. As I, like here, I'm following the hair kind of up and around, right? Uh, as we've talked about before, you guys will just have to put up with whatever wood you're carving. Uh, of course, to do something like this, basswood would probably 
be the choice to braid hair in. I could even work this uh, hair and this tie on the hair a little bit. Now, I got my V-tooling in here, you guys. Let me tighten my vise up just a little. Now, I'm going to take this V-tool, and I'm going to lay it over on its edge, kind of, and knock these sharper lines off. Now, the grain of the wood here is one thing I'll have to pay attention to because here in a little bit, with the way the grains lay, and it's going to want to pop up off there, especially in this butternut. Now, if you guys were carving basswood, you might not quite have that problem. All right, so see, I've, I'm going up through here, and I'm knocking the edges off this, the braid. There, the wood, the uh, grain's trying to get me there. All right, I got my zigzagging in, going here. I'm rounding the edges of it up. A lot of times at this point, you guys, I will take my knife and I'll make a stop cut right where these all come together here. Um, let's draw it right quick. Because where, here's my zigzag, zig, and zag, and zig, and zag, coming up. And this is going up and around. Now, right here where it comes together, right here, I'm going to take a knife and depth and, and do a three-way stop cut. Same way here, I'm going to depth and right here and do a three-way stop cut in there to start getting some depth in the middle of our braids. So I'm making a stop cut here. Probably got my hand right away, I can't really tell. So I'm depthing, depthing just a little bit right here. And of course, as you can see, it would take you a little while to do this. But see, I'm pulling that three-way stop cut right there out of there. Now, my next step of the braid is I'm going to take a, a number seven or a number five. Let's start with the small number five, and we'll go from there. But I'm going to hook the edge of a fishtail. You guys notice I use a lot of fishtail gouges. And I'm going to hook it here and take this piece of hair on around, see? All right, I'm going to round this out. I'm going to round this out on the back side. What you're doing is just bringing this back side of these braids around. So as you can see, it would take me a while to sit here and do that. And not only that, I'm also rounding the little locks on the braid. I'm rounding them up like any square edges like that or like this, I would be rounding this up, see? So these are the basics. And of course, I will continue to clean up here as I bring them around on the back side. I did some clean up here on this, but in here's where I'm talking about. I would be in here cleaning some of this stuff up. The key thing on this this particular project, you guys, is the fact of this depth. I tried to maintain this depth 
coming around. But you get the hang of what I'm doing here. You get them set in. You start rounding them up. Well, to bring you guys up to date where we left off on our masks is if you remember how I had this square across the bottom and this headdress was full at that time differently. Notice how all of a sudden just what zigzagging I've done here and on his feathers, notice how much he's changed just in that. And my weapon of choice, you guys, was a sawzall. I started to use the chainsaw, but a chainsaw is a little harder to control. So I just rolled this baby upside down like this, and I took that uh, sawzall, and I sawed these notches here out, which these are going to be the ends of my hair eventually. These are going to be some ribbons and stuff. I'm not sure where yet, but what I was out to do was just knock, get rid of that straight flat. If you guys go back in this video uh, just a little bit, you'll see where I pointed that out. And also here, I niched the feathers here with the sawzall. And notice how all of a sudden that's changing the whole game on this guy. The other thing that I'm doing, you guys, is I'm framing the picture. And what I mean by that is, is look how I've started to get deep here, deep, deep, and deep around. So all of a sudden, and I'm shoving this hair back. Uh, back when I used to judge a lot of shows, that was usually one of the first things that I ever noticed about people would let that hair be choked right up on their face like this. To where, in fact, that hair, especially if they have braids and coming down on his shoulder, it's way back. So in a carving like this, the more depth that I can shove this hair back on each side, the more it's going to pull this face and the carving out to us. So uh, anyway, let's put our other mask. Now remember, this one was out of a half a log, and it was six inches deep. So we had more room to work with back here. You might notice that I'm already starting to dig out, because if this is going to be a mask, two things we're trying to do, guys. Lighten the load. I, d I don't want this thing to weigh 15 pounds hanging on the wall. And plus the fact, if we're going to make a mask out of it, eventually we might end up taking a hole right on through this guy's eyes when we get thin enough. So I'm already starting to clean up in the back as I'm working other areas. Now you guys have heard me say this several times before on subject is don't get hung up just carving a feather or carving a feather or carving his hair or something. I At this stage in the game, you should be carve the hair a minute, <clears throat> carve these mink's tails a minute, carve on the feathers for a minute, carve up here on the headdress for a minute. What I'm getting at is move, move, move around. I got... um the area for my braids going on these pieces here, I had went ahead and braided some on this side, but um, I did knock off this square bottom. We talked about that, which give him a little more character. Now, this guy here, we actually have brought him along quite a ways. You might notice that I carved plumb through here around his neck area. And keep in mind, this is our guy that we only had four inches thick of wood. So I've been working on him a little at a time. I did this on purpose as far as carving through here to where we had some, you know, some movement and stuff going on along the bottom. Now, 
since I only got four inches here, you notice this guy looks a little bit odd because uh, I've left his face fairly flat. I need to do some stuff here like bring this lip in. I'm going to bring his lip, edge of his lip, kind of up and under that top lip. You can see I'm crumbled a little bit on his lip, which I'll straighten all this up in a little bit. Might even go ahead and get this septum dimple in there. I always joke about it being the old snot trough. Get it going in there. Uh, so I would be cleaning up there bring this lip on across here and usually i'll bring the edge of this mouth down not that i'm wanting the guy to frown but it'll give you a place to land this lip underneath there pretty soon you can see this wood kind of crumbly of course the grain is laying right there So I'm going to shape the lips. All right. The other thing that I want to bring along, you notice I'm cleaning up the mouth barrel, getting some depth here along the mouth barrel. But I'm also wanting to set in. I have the eye sockets kind of there. Um, I've showed you guys this maneuver before where I'll come across here on this mound. And I'll do this right here with the u gouts. Kind of, um, we'll draw it on our drawing here in just a second. Uh, well, it's already drawn on here, but let's draw it again. But by me dragging that u gouge right here across this thing like that. See, I'm starting to set up his lid and everything. So I'll drag that along. And what that does is start getting me set up here for my eye area. And I'll take a V-tool here in a little bit, a little one, and start the V-tool in this eye area. Let's go ahead and bring that along on the other side a little. Now, I don't always do eyes this way. I can leave flesh hanging over the eye. I can open the eye up more. You can see my lid line there that I got started. So we got that going. That eye is going to set right there which the next step would be a V-tool and cleaning up. I'm going to do a slight lull coming in here to the corners of the mouth on the lip. Um, you might notice that I already started getting some of these stanchions set up for the feathers. I started putting some veinings on the feathers. I wasn't going to spend a ton of time on here, but you might notice where I started to get some nice depth along here. Well, that's going to be the key thing here is I'm going to depth and around everything. And then eventually I'm going to do some just made up decorations on these uh, medallions. Now, you, if you had an end in book, you could probably look at various designs that you could go to on here. But I'm just going to do something like as simple as a star type pattern. I'll come around there with a little V tool. I'll set this star pattern in there. Now, one of my go-tos is a lot of times I'll do 
a Thunderbird or something in the middle of here. And it's just a little stick insignia of something like that. Not much. Just, and of course, the other part of him is underneath this. Um, I'll split these and clean up these uh, trails. Or, well, there's strands of leather in here. Um, I'm going to start getting me some character on his forehead wrinkles up here, you guys. Bring these wrinkles into his brow. And I'm going to clean up some wrinkles here coming out of the corners of his eyes. So what you're seeing here, and of course I'll do the same thing over here as far as my design. This is coming out of the middle of the medallion, these things here. So I'll end up doing my design just like I drew over here on this other medallion. A lot of cleaning up. Uh, I'll probably end up doing some beaded type choker things here on this part. And then some design on my um, medallion on the choker. I'll accentuate this Adam's apple and clean this area up. Quite a bit of cleaning up here, you guys. But uh, feathers working the feathers, more depth on my stanchions that are holding the feathers. And I'm going to clean up and bring my way kind of out of here. Let's do just a little bit on one of these eyes. But where I had drew my eyes in here, I'm going to take a little V-tool. It's going to be hard for me to keep my hands out of you guys' way. Here, but we'll V tool these eyes in here. I was just getting those marks off with the magic marker. I told you guys before try not to use a magic marker when you're in close, but then I knew that I would be cleaning and these off anyway so didn't really matter but i v-tooled the eye in there you guys and i'm going to do a three-way stop cut here in the corner of the eye my hand's probably right away but i'll cut the tear duct here and then begin to round the eye in here. I'll do the same thing on the other side is make a stop cut here, one here, and then reach in here from the three-way and pull that out of the corner. Now I'm simply going to drag my knife to meet the two here and up and over. And I do want to tell you guys that if you're in a carving club or if you just carve with other carvers, don't have to be a club or whatever, uh, let other guys know that are interested in this sort of a thing. Uh, we're still trying to, we're young channel, but we're growing our numbers. Um, all right, see here, I'm starting to get some roundness on this eye here, which is the exact same thing. I'm going to come over here, cut it in, round it. Then I'll begin to clean up and chase my lids a little closer and tuck them and, and then put some wrinkles in there. Um, the only other thing I may be working some on this mouth is I'll take my knife and make a cut right in the middle of the mouth there, like this. Okay. And then I'll sit there with my knife 
and pull a shadow. Sometimes just the slightest shadow in them lips will really begin to strengthen the lips out. And like I said, this is not the best piece of wood to demonstrate on because it's really hard. But guys, I just wanted to give you a clue on how I got started with my braids. Um, I have had people ask me, do I go back and put um, lines for hair up and around on the braids? You know, that is up to you. You'd have to salt and pepper to taste because here's what happens. If I go in here and start putting lines on these braids up and around, all of a sudden I start to lose the braiding effect on there. So I feel like I'm better off just to get good depth, get my hair ends and my tie ends going here, and not put little movements for hair in there. Because you lose yourself. You lose the braid in there somehow. But then again, if you want to try putting hair on the things, go for it. You know, and if it's your carving, you're going to do whatever you want to do. Now, let's, let's look at our other guy just a little bit here and talk about him. Now, this mouth on this lower one-third of the face if you're getting ready to draw that mouth in there, at least keep it halfway or above. So I'm fixing to V2 a line right here for his mouth. Now you guys remember back in kindergarten when you used to draw, I'll draw it down here. You used to draw birds flying like this when you were young, you know. But in a way, that's a good start on the mouth. If you V-tool it first, then you're working your V-tooling line for your bottom lip here, and then you're eventually bringing this center line on around here. So let's do just a little bit of V-tooling. I'm going to go light at first. If you want big, thick, heavy lips, like the other mask that we were just working on, his lips are pretty big and heavy. But see, I could sit here and work this line open a little bit. But a lot of times when I'm over here on the edge of this mouth, at the right here. I will go ahead and bring it a little deeper and down here. Like I said, not that I'm wanting the guy to frown. It's just going to give me a place to actually begin to land this uh, lower lip in there. So the line that's forming at the top of this tool right there would be my lip line. And see how I'm going to bring this on up and in here. And I'll do the same over here. Of course, like we just did on the other one, my knife in here. We'll get in there. I'm going to do some cleaning up and get my eye sockets ready. Uh, you notice I've started getting set up on my stanchions on this one for the feathers. And notice how I started to do a little design, almost like we were talking on the other one here. Here I'm just doing a checkered pattern. A lot of cleaning up to do on both of these. Well, you guys, I got finished up on what we talked about that I was going to get done. 
I cleaned up these braids. Now this is on the four inch thick one. And um, I got all this depth around the face that we talked about only because that's going to be the strength of this piece. I got my feathers on a hit miss type. I did not put every little line in the feathers, which I could have. Um, but I got my designs on my medallions and I got his lips and mouth in there. And of course, you saw that I was starting to sand on this piece, which means I'm pretty well done with this piece. Now, I did spend some more time back here on the back. I left a high spot for the hanger where it sits on the wall there. And I hollowed out as much of this weight. I could have taken it way thinner. And to be a true mask, you guys, uh, I would have drilled through all the way through at the eyes and made a mask out of it. But from experience, uh, I stand the chance of messing the eyes up, which I kind of like what I got. I, I could have done a lot of things probably a little better on this piece. But then again, I kind of like what I got. So that's the four inch thick one. Now, let's talk about this guy for just a second. You might notice I got a rotten spot uh, right here. Um, I probably will soak that with some super glue uh, only because it's kind of a rotten uh, knot and it's going to fall out of there. So I'd, I'd like to try to keep it if I could. Um, I'm working on my feathers. Now, I did mean to show you guys on this one how I came back and made some niches in the edges of my feathers. And notice how I got some good depth along the edges of the feathers. Every time you add good depth, you're adding strength to the carving. I have to admit, I got a little deeper in here, probably, than I was trying to get this up where you guys could see it better. I got a little deeper in here than I actually wanted to, but then it frames that picture of his face real well. On this guy, I just started to hint this in, and we talked about this the other day on the other one, but I'll just do a couple of drawings here. I want to reinforce the shape of this mouth. His lip, upper lip, and then I'll run a V-tool through the middle of the lips. And I usually will get some good depth over in this area where I'm tucking the um, lower lip kind of under the upper lip. We talked about the shape of the eye the other day a little bit. This will be the shape of the eyes. Um, now on this, this guy, I'm going to do a little more of a hanging baggy over the edge of his eye than I did on that one. Um, but the shape of the eye is still somewhat like this right here. Uh, the other thing that I was strengthening up, you guys, with some depth, and I wanted to point that out on this one, is look at the depth that I have on this mouth barrel area. So on this guy, that's exactly what I'm going to do, is strengthen up both the nostrils on the nose, cleaning them up. I'm going to get some good depth here. Shape the end of the nose coming around. And then this mouth barrel, I really got some good depth on this. Um, like I just said, all of that strength is really going to begin to pop this guy out of here. So um, the other area that I, I will be working on here, I did point out that rotten spot, but I will give him some Adam's apple coming here. 
and I will show these sternomastoid muscles a little height in here coming up his neck area. So basically that stuff I'm going to get done on this guy. I didn't say a lot about the feather here, but I will be doing, you can see I already got started on these feathers and this uh, stanchions that hold the feathers in. And I was just doing a quick hit and miss type thing like this on the feathers. You know, just at random, whatever happens. Then I came in here and done a few niches on the edge of these feathers, which I plan on doing here, you guys. I am planning on coming in here, leaving a little more of a bag underneath, and getting this eye socket set up with more of a roundness, a marble-type shape in both sides here. So this is not the actual eye, but the setup that I'm gonna do the eye in. You might notice I'm doing these rounded beads on this one uh, instead of claws or something like we showed on this particular one. And the next time that uh, you guys see these carvings, I'm actually gonna put the finish on them this is basically the same stuff I've been showing you guys in that square can. Um, it, it says it's warm satin, which that's usually what I like to use is uh, something very soft. And uh, We're finally coming to the end of this project. This was the guy that was out of the four inch butternut. And... Um, I was pretty happy with him. He turned out a little odd as far as um, his face being so flat, but it's because he was only out of four inches thick this way. But this wood was butternut, and it carved pretty darn decent. Uh, not the best butternut I ever carved, but um, i set him down for a second. Um, this guy here... He was the one with the bug holes in him, if you remember. And uh, this wood was a little odd because it was kind of semi-soft right in through here where the bug holes were. Uh, if you guys had carved much butternut, you, you guys know that the worms love this stuff when it's more in the tree form than when it's uh, in lumber, you know. Um, but anyway, this carve was butternut, and I would say it carved fairly decent. So what I wanted to do was just show you guys the finished product of, of this carve, and uh, they all turned out somewhat differently. So I also want to tell you guys thanks for watching and tuning in on our channel. Our numbers are still growing, and... Uh, that's what we're out to do is to get an audience watching us. So if you guys at home um, know anybody that's interested in wood carving or this type of stuff, because not all of our videos are going to be on wood carving. We've got some coming up soon on some casting we're doing. Um, we've got some marble stuff coming up. So we do have a, a variety of other things that we're dabbling into here on Woodcarver's Corner. So I just want to thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on Woodcarver's Corner.